um, perspective to a lot of folks, and, and, and it really kind of gives them a reason and really kind of brings the point home as to, as to why we all do this. So Kayla, I'm going to ask you a few questions first, and then Maisha will get to you next. But Kayla, if you could just kind of walk with us through um, you know, your initial diagnosis and, and some of the initial feelings and, and emotions that you had, uh, and, and just kind of walk us through your journey uh, to start. Okay, well, my journey started September 22nd, 2012. It was two weeks before my seventh birthday. I was six years old. I was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia at 4.34 in the morning. So I was I was halfway asleep. So how I felt at the moment, nothing really. I just really wanted to watch some Dr. Seuss. I remember letting them put on a little right for me. And... and, and- let me ask you real quick, and, and what was your, how old were you when you were when you were diagnosed? I was six years old. Okay, six years old. So obviously, the gravity of what's happening to a six year old it probably doesn't hit home. And I see mom shaking her he- head already. But you know, like I said, at, at that point, you know, it goes through your head. You hear all these big words. What 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 was the initial reaction? It was like, oh, okay. Um, all right. What you say about it? <laughs> you know, it wasn't like, but like, oh, I'm gonna die. It's just like, oh, okay, another process to go through. And it's just, I don't know. It's just a bump in the road for you, really. <laughs> yeah, that's un- that's understandable. Now, Maisha, mom, um, I have I have a I have a child myself, and at six years old. You know, you're looking at your baby, and 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 that diagnosis comes across. What's going through your mind initially? Initially, I was totally overwhelmed, um, distraught, and being a mom of two other small children, um, and Kayla was six, her sister was about three, and her brother one, so that was really daunting, and to hear your child has cancer in the same sentence, it was just unbelievable for me, totally unbelievable. And then, then, and then the burden that that you know that immediately floods through your head is like you said, you have two younger children that that still need love, affection, attention, all those things, and and, and now you've got one that needs extra love and extra special attention, you know. Every and I would assume that everything goes through your head. How am I going to afford to pay the hospital bills? Cost, right? You know, would they want a child for it, or do I have to give an arm or a leg to pay for it? I mean, it was just very taxing you know mentally and physically and oh my gosh you know how how can this happen and who did it and you start looking for who to blame and you you know it's not your fault but it's just a lot of things begin to weigh in on your mind at that time and it is like you said it's a stream of emotions trying to process what you're dealing with and 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 you you want to be angry at somebody, but there's nobody to be angry at, and and probably to a certain extent you wanted to be angry with God, but you want to kind of just, you, but you don't want to question things, and you just kind of you're you're riding the journey at that point. Right, right. So Absolutely. so my next questions, and I guess this is up to either one of you to answer. I know you were six at the time, so Maisha, this is probably a better question for you. But how did Saint Jude step in? When when did they step in? What did they say after the diagnosis? So. St. Jude stepped in after I was, um, we were transported by ambulance to ambulance rides later. St. Jude um, stepped in and like she said, about 4.30 in the morning and the social worker came in and then there was this round table with the doctors to discuss what her diagnosis was, what the treatment um, would be and how um, they would virtually pay for everything that had to deal with her treatment is like, and guess what? This will be literally zero cost to you. And that's when you like, really? Like, what? Because if you go to the hospital for a headache and they give you Tylenol, you can pay up with the five hundred dollars. <laughs> so to have St. Jude to step in and say, you know, we're gonna take care of everything that has to deal with her treatment, and as well as you know, food while we were there and. It was just really, really a burden lifted. So all I had to do was really care for her and my other children without having to worry about how was I going to pay for this astronomical bill of cancer and treatment. So St. Jude really stepped in and stepped up. 
it is it is the burden off the shoulders or one of the burdens off the shoulders. Yeah. Obviously, it's a long way, and and, and after the yeah. diagnosis, it's one part of the of the journey that's now kind of taken care of, and then you know you move on from there. Kayla, um, you know, six years old, you go rolling into Memphis, Tennessee, and, and and you step foot on campus for the first time. I know that was a long time ago, but what what were what were the first? What are your first memories? What do you think of when when you when you step on on the St. Jude campus? Honestly, St. Jude, it really looks like Disney World. So I didn't really think I was going to a hospital. I knew I was in an ambulance, but I didn't think I was at the hospital for. I was like, oh, okay. This is nice, <laughs> like, even though what I was there for wasn't so nice, but the hospital is so it's beautiful. Yeah, and, and it is. It's like you said. It's so fascinating to for a six year old, and and I and I can only process to the the thought process of Kayla walking in at six and going, wow, this is this is a neat place, and and it is. It's a happy place. It genuinely is. But then your yeah. concern as a parent is, you know, her eyes are sparkling. Wow, this is a neat place, but you know. Maisha, your your thoughts are still, this is a long way to go. Absolutely. And to know that her treatment will be two and a half years and, you know, just and going to the hospital daily for, and she had blood transfusions and platelet uh, transfusions Mm -hmm. and spinal taps and bone marrow aspirates. And so as a mother, knowing that your child is dealing with something that I had a spinal tap having a baby. Right. And so your baby's having spinal taps. It's like, oh, my gosh. But St. Jude does such an incredible job of providing child life specialists to speak to the children. So they're able to talk to them and speak to them where they can understand and play with dolls. So they'll say, "Okay, the doll has a port like you. And, Mm -hmm. you know, how does that feel? And being able to give her the vocabulary to help to talk to her friend. Because some of her friends were concerned, like, so is cancer contagious? Can I get it by looking at you? And, you know, so she was just real confident, thanks to St. Jude and the staff, to be able to say, no, cancer is not like a cold. You can't get it by just looking at me or touching me. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, it is in my body and it's in my blood. So that was very, very helpful because I didn't know what to say as a parent, like, Ah. Yeah, it's it's but part it, it of the, it's the educational yeah. process, and 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 like you said, equipping young children, a six year old, with the ability to talk about something that's happening in her body, but being able to communicate it to her friends and her family, and 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 really kind of help her grow up in 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 many instances, probably a little sooner than she probably needed to, but at that time, that's what was needed. It was needed and very necessary. And like she said, St. Jude is really like the Disneyland of hospitals with children doing yoga. And, you know, they they really focus and hone in on things where kids can really just be like the Toys R Us, where a kid can be a kid. They really have an opportunity at St. Jude to just live their lives as children and not have to do the heavy lifting that the parents and the staff have to do. Kayla, what you smiling out? Uh, Toys, Toys R Us went out of business like two years ago. You, you don't know what, where a kid can be a kid. That was that's my time frame. I remember Jeffrey and oh, Toys R Us. Jeffrey and Toys R Us went out of business. That's fair. That's fair. You 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 keep up with current <laughs> events. Um, well, let's move on from 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 the the visit the the initial uh, St. Jude visit the initial treatment. Um, Kayla, where are you at now? You're 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 17 now. You know what? Where where are you in your in your in your cancer journey? Well, right now I just go back once a year. I'll be going back one more time this year, and then next year when I graduate high school, it will be my last visit. So I'll be graduating St. Jude and graduating high school. At the that's same time. that's exciting time, Maisha. How you feel about that? I'm ecstatic. Kayla will be celebrating her seventh year in remission is what they call it, but we call it a cancer-free anniversary. Mm-hmm. So uh, this year, um, April 15th tax day, she'll be celebrating her seventh year of being cancer-free. That's so nice. we're excited about that. I can't think of a better way to celebrate tax day, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to send my taxes in early. And I'm just going to celebrate with you on April 15th because that, that sounds like a plan. Um, you know, to both of you, well, first off, Kayla, what's your future plans? Wait, 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 high, high school graduation is right around the corner. I know your mama doesn't want to hear that, but 
the, you know, high school graduation is right around the corner. What, what's your, what are your plans for the future? Well, I want to go get my business associate's degree along with get my cosmetology and my esthetician's license because I do hair and I want to get into lashes and nails. That is awesome. So you've got a future already mapped out. You can get your business degree, so you're probably going to have your own, you know, salon or how, how whatever. You may have something even more uh, bigger and a, more elaborate than that coming down the line. I'll let you do my nails. Bring it on. I, I got a niece that already does a, a bad job on them, so I, I, I hope she's not seeing this interview, but uh, neither here nor there. Um, ladies, I, I'll ask both of you, or I'll let you, whoever wants to tackle this first. And, these, and this is kind of my last few questions that I really wanted to kind of hit with you guys is, what would you tell the folks um, that that are that build the dream homes and, and build this Monroe dream home and, and and the people that buy the tickets? What what would you say to those people about uh, about St. Jude and what they're doing to help continue the mission? Well, first, I would tell them thank you for supporting and giving the way that they're giving, and then I would tell them that it's not just giving to any hospital. It's actually given to families and homes. You're giving it to a community, basically. It's a good way of looking at it. Mom, do you have anything to add on to that? Just again, we are very appreciative because now you get to put faces and people and names to your gifts and donations and being able to donate to your local families and communities where every dime you know it really goes to the families for housing for food for transportation for the medicine for treatments for everything that these children need in order to live successful lives as long as they're here st jude provides and so when you give to st jude you're not just giving to st jude you're giving to the families that are comprised of st jude and again giving to kayla was given also to my other sip to her siblings, my other children, because they were able to still have their sister, their big sister, that is, you know, so given to St. Jude is like given to not just the child in treatment, but to the families as well. That's so really, thank- that's really a good way of putting it too, because, you know, the, your, your other siblings, you're, 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 you're the big sister. So, you know, they're looking to you for, for, you know, strength and, and, and everything. And, and like I said, that's, that, that's uh, probably the best way to put it is, is it really blesses the entire family. Now, you know, you were a Louisiana patient, Kayla. I want to ask you, cause we've got, we've got more patients. You know, we, we get, we get more Northeast and North Louisiana patients and, and, and folks from all across the country that head to St. Jude every year. And, and, Unfortunately, sadly enough, there's going to be another six-year-old in your shoes that's going to be heading to St. Jude, you know, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Well, if you could tell anything to, those, to, to that next six-year-old that walks on, onto that campus, what would you say to, her, to him or her? I would tell them to breathe and enjoy it. Like, it's going to be stressful. It is. But the people who are taking care of you, your family members, they got you. You don't have to worry about anything. Mom, what would you say to the parents? I would say to the parents, you're in a safe place and you begin to develop bonds and friendships with other parents who really get it and that know how you feel without saying, oh, I know how you feel. But there are some parents that have, they will walk alongside you um, just as I found support with other moms and other families who experienced the same uh, treatment and care that their children were receiving. And so it brings such a different commonality to the parents. So just remember, you take it one day at a time, count all of your blessings, and don't take anything for granted because there's really light at the end of the tunnel. And just keep that, keep the eyes on the prize. There's hope. Uh, absolutely. I, 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 I think that's probably the best way to wrap up this interview. Um, I, 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 I can't thank you all enough for, for just sitting down and talking with us for a few minutes. Um, and, and, you know, do you all have anything else you'd like to add? I mean, I, we've pretty much covered everything. I mean, do you all have any other thing that, that you all would, besides Andrea asking for the forecast, do, do you all have anything else that you all would like to add? No, just thank you all so much. We well, appreciate 
I, I, I will genuinely say this to both of you. It is a labor of love. And to be honest with you, uh, for us at the TV station and for me personally, it's not, it's not a job. This is the one part of my job that I truly, truly enjoy. I love getting to visit with, with people like Kayla. And I, I love learning, you know, your stories and your journey and, and watching y'all graduate and, and become business owners and leaders in this society. And, and, uh, you never, you never know, I'll be voting you into office or something one day, you, you know? And so awesome. just, I, I love seeing those bright, happy smiles and, and, and to have y'all both here, it, it truly is a privilege. Um, I, I think I'm pretty much done on my end. Um, I don't know if any of the St. Jude folks, the Alsac folks want to chime in before we wrap this up. Um, do you guys have anything else that y'all would like to say? 